I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good morning, good morning, Kim Orleski. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful morning? It's fantastic. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to connect with you, Kim. Please do tell us, what part of the world are you in right now? I'm in Calgary, Canada, so the Great White North. Oh, the Great White North. It's getting cold up there now, isn't it? <laughs> it, it is, it is. We have been very fortunate to evade uh, permanent snow for a little while now, but you can feel it in the air, and it is definitely getting much chillier. Wow. Well, please do tell us, which of your talents is responsible for us meeting? Well, you know, I you reached out today because of my podcast that I had launched. It was dedicated towards sales professionals and entrepreneurs that are wanting to sell more. Uh, in that podcast, I had actually interviewed some of the most amazing entrepreneurs, business owners, and sales leaders, uh, everyone from Grant Cardone to Guy Kawasaki, Neil Patel, and the list continues to go on. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it takes a great interviewer to have those conversations you had, right? Who did you learn that skill from? The interviews, you know, I actually learned it from my sales experience, just how to ask really good questions. And this is part of what I do in my training, my courses that I provide to my clients is asking really good questions, which are the open ended questions, not the, you know, answers where you get a yes or a no, do you, would you, could you, uh, but the ones that are really thought provoking, like how did you, or why did you, what, what makes that different? Hmm. Did you hear how she's doing that amazing audience? It's like her second language, right? When she's doing that because of the practice, right? That you've had. It is. Yeah. And it's really comes to a lot of practice. Oftentimes when we're, whether we're having sales conversations or we're looking to interview people for podcasts, it does take a little bit of work. And the misconception for a lot of people is that they want to have it conversational. And I put that kind of in air quotes as I say it, because because we think that, well, if we allow it to flow, it'll go a little bit more naturally. And I promote with my clients and even with myself when I'm interviewing people for podcasts, I spend probably at least 30 minutes researching and actually writing the questions down that I want to ask. And when we go into a meeting with that, it actually makes us look prepared, not amateur. And if your client or your prospect is sitting with you and they feel like you are prepared, that you're taking notes, they're more likely to continue to engage with you further on. And as a podcast host, the conversation reaches a much higher element. You know, people are excited and they're like, okay, you know what? We're actually asking some tougher questions. We're getting down into the deeper substance of what I want to talk about. Yeah. And definitely it's what your audience desires, right? The opportunity for you to ask the questions that they are asking on their side, right? So it, it, it's a, it's a shake hand. Yeah. You know, I mean, we want to stay away from the superficial, right? And oftentimes we think that we're being nice when we ask very nice questions, you know, like, you know, everything from how was the weather? How was your family? And I almost look at those, I call them the rhetorical questions yeah. because, you know, how are you doing? Right? Fine. You know, it, it doesn't matter whether the answer if you get the answer or not right when we ask you know the deeper questions right what what inspired you to do this right uh, how has that changed your life you know all of a sudden we actually understand a little bit more about the person's depth the breadth of their knowledge and we get down into really what makes them tick and how did they become the person that they are so that we feel inspired when we listen to these it definitely takes some work to do what you're speaking about why will you continue to repeat this skill well you know i i love continuing it because it refines it and it gets better and every now and then i you know will ask a question you know you you practice and practice and practice and you ask the same questions and every now and then when you're just in that moment and listening all of a sudden you realize that there's a deeper question that kind of just evolves out of nowhere. Sometimes even as podcast hosts, we'll all of a sudden ask a question that maybe was not written out ahead of time. And we're like, I, you know, you think to yourself, you're like, where did that even come from? <laughs> but you realize that that's, you know, for whatever reason, that was the right question to ask in that particular moment. You end up pulling the thread a little bit and understanding really what is unraveling before you. Mm. 
Yeah, it's. I love how you're describing it. She's totally on point. It's Kim Oleski. Well, please do tell us one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years. Yeah. So actually, you know, and it's it's been amazing. My my entrepreneurial journey has only been for about three years right now. I was I classify myself as a quasi uh, entre- serial entrepreneur, but I was always dabbling in things, and. This was the first time I really involved myself completely in my business, uh, which is actually training sales professionals and entrepreneurs how to sell more and have great conversations. I I believe in calendar blocking. And part of that consistency is actually maintaining that. So for myself, I do a lot of speaking on stage. And in order to do that, you know, it's not by luck or chance. It's by putting yourself in the right rooms at the right time. And I'm talking both virtually and physically. And so when I want to continue to expand my presence and expand my business, I dedicate time every two weeks to reach out to people that are hosting events or looking for speakers or answering, you know, call for submissions. And that type of consistent action has been able to bring me to, you know, places like Boston for speaking on inbound stage next to Michelle Obama. And, you know, later on this year, uh, actually next year, so August 2018, I'll be speaking on another stage down in Dallas along names of uh, Grant Cardone and a few really massive uh, entrepreneur motivational speakers yet to be announced. Um, I got the, the word on who it could be, but, you know, we'll, we'll say it's uh, somebody along the lines of, uh, you know, greatness <laughs> when, we, when we get to that. So, but when you do those actions consistently, right, you know, appreciate those small wins as well, because sometimes we feel like, well, I've sent out a ton of emails, I've made a ton of calls, and I'm not seeing that. But when we connect with somebody for the very first time, We appreciate those wins because those are the foundation to success. Yeah, I love it. Kim, while we're speaking, uh, just for those listening, there's just a bit of a cut sometimes when you're speaking, like a very small cut. So I'm not sure what it is, but amazing audience, I'm hoping that you're getting the value here that Kim is sharing. Um, It's stopped now, so we'll continue, yeah? Okay, yes, please. How does it make you feel, Kim? Yeah, you know what? I love what I do. So I worked in corporate sales for nine years before I started my own business, and I I loved what I did. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, I hit a moment where I realized that I was – there was something more in my life and I wasn't sure what it was. And, and part of that struggle, you know, kind of being on the tail end of millennial, right. I'm this this Gen Xer slash millennial person was that I believe in the idea that we don't have to wait to achieve all of our dreams and goals, right. That we can have that now. And for me, you know, I decided to create a pivotal moment, which was that actually to, you know, quit my job and sell my house and go travel around the world by myself. And that entire soul searching journey, you know, where I had crossed like 17 countries in the course of six months brought me back to realizing that it wasn't the, the, sales, the corporate sales that I disliked. It was the idea that I was helping a larger organization grow their bottom line by 0.01% in profitability. Hmm. And that didn't have the impact on the world that I wanted. And so when I realized that I could impact, you know, an entrepreneur or business owner on a greater scale, when I could teach them the skills that I had perfected in corporate sales in a way that, you know, would take their business from, you know, 40,000, 50,000, a hundred thousand, a million dollars. I mean, that was massive impact. You know, I, feel like I am, you know, not impacting the world in a great way, but I'm helping those help the world, right? And I'm sitting, you know, in the backstage, you know, rooting people on, cheerleading them, showing them the skills that they need to become wild and massive successes. So I love what I do, right? I mean, you can hear the passion in my voice. Right? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I love, I mean, I love what I do. I, I work with, you know, I have a, a select number of one-on-one clients that, you know, uh, want even more uh, success, right? And so they'll work with me on a one-on-one basis, but I also do a lot of courses and and I actually have waiting lists typically um, for these courses because the value that people receive in them, it, it works for their timelines, it works for their, their ability. And I believe in growing uh, on small steps, right? I don't believe in the three-day, you know, immersive trainings anymore because we end up feeling excited. And then two weeks later, we forget everything that we had just learned. I believe in taking these small, actionable steps and we grow upon those skills. Same as learning a language, same as, you know, learning, you know, uh, how to read or write for the very first time. It's practice, practice, practice. It's not, you know, here's, you know, uh, 
Homer's The Odyssey or whatever, Ulysses, right? Go read it. And then by the end of it, you'll learn how to read, right? It's not the immersive experience. It's about taking little steps at a time and growing upon it. And when I see my students and the people that I work with learn those skills and be able to truly impact their business, their families, their lives and their clients' lives, that's what brings me joy every single day. I love it. Amazing audience, if you're listening, this is Kim Oleski. You could definitely check out her podcast. Is there any other place you'd like to point us to that we could go find out more about what you do? Yeah, my, you know what? My website is the best place to stay up to date on all the events, speaking events, books that I'm going to be releasing pretty soon, as well as everything else podcast related. You can go to KimOrleski.com. Yeah, and that's O-R-L-E-S-K-Y. It's like or less key. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you well, so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, Kim, let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm Caribbean water. Kim, what is your earliest childhood memory? Oh, um, you know, I remember actually being in kinder garden and i think we were having career day and i was painting some girl's nails <laughs> i apparently in kindergarten i guess i wanted to be a nail technician <laughs> <laughs> wow so why do you think this memory is so clear you know i think it was a moment where it was lots of fun for me and i think it was also uh, an opportunity where i got to choose right i, I think we forget you know as parents and as uh, educators educators you know we tell people what to do but when we don't when we allow them the space to create what that means with them uh that's where the magic happens and i think for me that was that was a pivotal moment intriguing well can i can i offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind please Uh, yes uh, the hands are so representative of what can be accomplished right every everything our hands it's it it surrounds a lot of what we do our hands and the fact that you are helping individuals enhance what they're doing with their hands, uh, even in their businesses, to see you doing that at that particular point in time. It's really fascinating that you're doing that there. And I'd just like to connect it to what you're doing now by helping others uh, really enhance what they're doing with their hands and their business world. Oh, I, I love that interpretation. Thank you. <laughs> I, I have to like take a piece of that and like put somewhere on my website. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, if we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? Oh my goodness. When I was 12, uh, you know, it just, it was, I, I think it was around the time that like the movie had space jam had come out. I don't know if there's any listeners that remember this one. And it was this like, yes. And there was a song. This is so embarrassing. There was a song. It was like, get ready for this. <laughs> 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 hey, I'm bumping my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I loved that song. I remember working with uh, another girl. They had a talent show at school and we created a dance routine, which included um, us doing somersaults. And I think just like pr- basically gyrating. <laughs> <It> was really <laughs> choreography. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Hey, well, Kim, it definitely does connect though, right? I mean, you, yeah. you're, you're the individual, you've definitely made the sacrifices and now it's really you saying, shouting, if you would get ready for this, right? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Well, Kim, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get over this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. Kim, we're going to go pretty quickly here. Kim, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Are you married? Uh, Yes. Do you have children? Yes. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Yes. What about screen time, the phone and the computer? More than eight or less than eight hours a day? (laughs) More. (laughs) 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 Uh, Kim, after having a thousand and one conversations in three months... Um, I jokingly say I needed to do a butt replacement surgery. I'm joking. (laughs) I came up with a workbook. The name of it is yours. It stands for your own unique real self. Connected to that as you journey deeper is your own unique real statement, your mission. If you had to share with us, Kim, your own unique real statement, something that represents Kim Oleski, what would you say that is? Uh, If you don't ask, the answer will always be no. Hmm, Love it. Kim Oleski, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? You know what? This was a great time. Thank you so much. And I look forward to, you know, having anyone connect with me either on social media or on my website. Love it. Kim Oleski, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you. 
Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.